technology for artificial intelligence. So, um, you know, I think there's that, that desire always you want to flip it over to manual mode and kind of let it do its thing. But if you leave it in regular mode, sport, you know, like uh, automatic transmission, put it in sport, the vehicle basically, as you approach the turn, it's going to use G sensors to determine how you're going into that turn. It'll then hold the gear, so that way as you go through it, when you come back out, there's no, it holds it from any gear shifting to happen. Again, you don't want to have things change as you're going through turns, kind of changing the drive or fun to drive aspect of that vehicle. So as you come out of that turn, uh, then it's uh, you know, pure on acceleration. So hold back, I guess, as you're driving tomorrow. Try it in automatic, and then also put it over into manual mode as well. So of course, uh, drive mode select has been kind of a part of our Lexus um, vehicles uh, recently. And of course, GSF has quite the gamut. First and foremost, normal mode, uh, that's when it uh, thinks you know, powertrain, VDIM, the electric power steering, and of course air conditioning. Click it to the left, and I do encourage you to, you know, try all the different modes uh, as you're in the vehicles, whether it be GSF, RCF, or even our F-Sport vehicles to get a sense of how things change. Eco mode is basically powertrain, it kind of mutes the response of powertrain because it's about fuel efficiency, and actually uh, degrades the air conditioning output for a bit. So again, that's that person. To I can't imagine somebody driving a GSF in eco mode, but uh, I guess it's there for those that do. Also, too, we do, of course, have Sport S mode, so that's going to have an impact on powertrain, takes it from that non, uh, the more non-linear response it gives you, and also the electric power steering is going to give you a little more sport feel to it. Then, one more turn to the right, so one turn is Sport, second turn is going to be Sport Plus, and that's where everything happens. So powertrain, we get that more um, you know, uh, non-linear response, transmission shifts change, as well as the VDIM uh, for that vehicle integrated management system. So of course that's kind of taking into account traction control system, vehicle stability control, um, all those things and kind of like um, basically overseeing all that. It allows you, it kind of allows you to push the envelope. So I think of VDIM as almost like a guardrail. So when you're in sport mode with VDIM, basically that, those guardrails come down and allows you to kind of have a little bit more fun with the vehicle. Electric power steering as well, again, it's going to give you a more tighter um, responsive feel to it. Uh, air conditioning stays the same on that. Uh, also to notice uh, on the left side there, next to snow, there's DVD. GSF has standard on it, uh, torque vectoring differential, as Brian mentioned. Uh, different from the RCF where it actually is an option on the vehicle. So as Brian mentioned, um, it is uh, you know, it's using electric motors on each side and will actually uh, help with torque distribution on that, so allowing for more fun to drive experience. So this is a bit of an eye chart, uh, but you know, again, as we're entering the turn, there's a yaw moment, uh, and basically the uh, torque is going to transfer uh, from the outer wheel to the inner wheel. As we continue through that turn then, it actually then takes that torque, uh, the electric motors will then uh, apply more torque to the outer wheel to actually help you go around that turn. So then again, getting more greater um, control and sense of uh, stability. And basically it's allowing the system uh, to kind of not, um, to kind of maximize what the car is capable of, making sure that the wheels are always kind of doing what they need to for that fun to drive uh, performance aspect of the car. So again, standard on GSF. Also, drive mode, uh, driver selectable modes. So as we shift uh, the drive mode select, our uh, adaptive meter display, you're going to see changes in here. In this case, we're looking at the standard mode, and you'll see um, standard PVD mode there in the center ring. Uh, also, too, at the bottom, there's PVD as a standard as well. We rotate it that one, um, excuse me, I'm referring to TVD. So the TVD button, as you flip through TVD, you'll see the change. So normal mode, slalom. Slalom's going to be more, of course, about agility. So, you know, those twisties, uh, allowing you to have that uh, greater sense of control with that. And then lastly, we have track mode, which is going to be more about, um, you know, overall handling uh, of that as well. So again, when you're on the track tomorrow, Try those uh, different changes and get a sense of uh, the difference with that. It also does give you a visible display of the torque distribution left to right on there, as you can see. So the suspension. Uh, suspension, of course, has been enhanced. It's a double wishbone suspension up front. Uh, it's been retuned and upgraded. Uh, the suspension geometry, uh, the uh, forged aluminum upper and lower arms as well have been enhanced uh, for the GSF. Uh, spring rate, uh, coil spring rate has been adjusted as well, or refined, and then we're using ZF uh, Sachs uh, shock absorbers for high response and low wear on that front. 
At the rear is a multi-link rear suspension, and again, very similarly, uh, it's been upgraded suspension geometry, uh, also forged aluminum arms, and then um, also the ZF SAC um, shocks as well with that. So again, as you would expect, taking the platform of the GS and just enhancing it so it has the better capability for handling uh, with all that this vehicle offers. Brembo brakes, the car can go fast. We, of course, need to make sure that it has the ability to stop. So at the front, uh, they're almost 15 inch, 14.96 uh, Brembo's with six piston uh, calipers. And then in the rear, they're uh, almost 14 inch with uh, four piston uh, monoblock calipers. Also, too, notice um, orange. Orange is now a new uh, available color for the uh, caliper as well. So black is the basic, and then orange is available. And it's even true now of our escort vehicle. So again, allowing us some more customization uh, for our owners. The wheel you see here, it's a 19 inch uh, forged aluminum alloy wheel uh, with that uh, kind of thin spokes uh, finish to it. So very kind of you know, modern and fresh looking. And then the, the wheel, the tires are the Michelin uh, Pilot Super Sports. So the front 255 35ZR19s and the rear 275 35ZR19s. So overall look of the vehicle, uh, again paying homage to the F uh, brand of the F vehicles before it, like the ISF. First and foremost, you'll see, and I wish I had a picture that flipped it the other way, because of course the uh, air cooling vent behind the front wheel, uh, that is L-shaped, if we're looking at it from the proper side. Uh, but that, of course, is going to allow for uh, airflow, uh, engine cooling, and also stability for the vehicle. The, the hood line from the A-pillar forward is all unique. Again, uh, it has a look and a feel for it. The V8 engine in the vehicle. So, again, a very aggressive uh, overall stance. Even the side rocker panels actually are widened, uh, again, to help with the stability and handling of the vehicle itself. Up front, uh, the grille itself actually has the grille starts lower uh, and then spans out further into the uh, grille area. Features the mesh uh, grille that we've seen on a lot of our F vehicles and F Sport vehicles. Upper portion of the grille are L's embedded in there. And as you go further down, you'll actually notice there's F uh, motifs in there. So again, paying homage to the F vehicles. Also, hard to see, but the lower portion right here, this is a carbon uh, fiber reinforced plastic um, lower portion of the grill itself to help with downforce in there. And of course, the very large uh, intake there on each side of the vehicle. Better shot there. Uh, and then also at the rear of the vehicle, new tail lights, you featuring a black trim, uh, also LEDs uh, in the back there, and then a carbon fiber uh, rear spoiler as well uh, on that. You can see the quad diffusers uh, is the back. And just you know, showing again the airflow around the vehicle. So again, those large intakes help with uh, airflow uh, engine cooling, but also brake cooling as well uh, with that. And aerodynamics is 0.33. There's a better shot of that uh, carbon fiber reinforced plastic CRFP uh, rear spoiler on the vehicle. And of course, underbody, uh, a lot of diffusers, both uh, under the engine compartment area and the rear of the vehicle, helping uh, disperse uh, airflow underneath the vehicle. And of course, with the engine, you know, without the track and it's run we're running it hot, of course, we need to make sure that we cool both transmission and the engine oil. So uh, you see on the uh, left side is the oil cooler and the right side is the transmission cooler. Up front, lights. Um, GSF, I'll point this out, there's only two options on the GSF. One of them is the Mark Levinson sound system and uh, it's escaping me the other one, something very minor. Um, these headlamps are standard on the vehicle, our, our RCF, they're an option, this triple premium LED headlamp, so again, with the L motif. And also now, daytime running lights have this uh, uh, in integrated uh, L-shaped design as well. At the rear, LEDs continue, and you get a little bit better shot, you can see some of the, uh, the dark trim area, so again, just a little sportier look to it. And uh, air diffusers, uh, vortex generators on each side, again, helping with airflow management around the vehicle. So when you get inside, uh, it definitely has a sporty look to it, but also to the luxury that you would expect with a, a Lexus vehicle. Some of the uh, uh, details with it are perforated leather steering wheel. The steering wheel as well has a greater thickness, cross-sectional thickness, so again, it feels good, you know, very inspiring as far as driving it. For those of you who are in RCF, it's the same, same wheel. And those of you who haven't, you'll definitely feel like much more inspired uh, with that. F-badging, of course, also to aluminum pedals, 
and uh, the adaptive meter that we'll take a peek at in a moment. So drive mode display, as we change from normal, eco, and sport, and sport plus, to the adaptive meter is going to change the information on display there. So here we are in normal. Uh, you can see in the bottom right, uh, yellow says slalom, uh, TVD we're in slalom. And then also we have a G-force sensor. Um, this is our multi-information display, and on the steering wheel, you're allowed to you can kind of go through and cycle through get different information as we switch. So let's say we go to eco. Why again? I don't know. Um, but there's the eco mode and the very vibrant kind of uh, look to it. And in this case, uh, we're looking at uh, you know, current uh, miles per gallon. So flip it again to the right. Uh, sport mode is the first one we get into. So again, we see a different display with some additional information. Um, also, torque distribution we're seeing with the TVD. So this is a TVD equipped uh, vehicle for vector differential. Second time to the right, now we're into sport plus mode. And in this case, too, you can see one of the options, uh, one of the available features is a lap timer. And you can actually record history as far as uh, your best lap time in the vehicle. Sport seats, so you have a great engine, great brakes, uh, very rigid body, capable of doing things, but of course you need to make sure that you can sit very firmly and comfortably in the vehicle. So similar to our RS RCF vehicle, these exclusive F Sport seats, uh, they feature integrated headrests. Also too, the stitching is actually designed to uh, cup the body and kind of match the flow of the, of the body as well. You sit one with the car, as you would expect. A car that inspires performance, you have to feel you know, connected to the vehicle. Uh, leather interior standard. Uh, interior is available in both black, gray, and uh, stratus gray, and circuit red with the three interior choices. Also, too, the back seats have a very similar um, look and feel to them, except for headrest style. It's funny because I don't think in the RCF presentation we ever spoke about the back seats. Because, uh, I mean, not many people get in them. Uh, continuing with the performance look, carbon fiber trim and dark silver accents. This is taking a look at the uh, remote touch area. So you can see the carbon fiber inlays there. And then uh, the remote touch has that dark silver. Also too, you can see the, uh, the, the palm rest pad of the remote touch has Alcantara on it. Uh, Alcantara is also over top of the meter area as well as continuing through the dash and even in the door inserts as well. And the nice thing about that is Alcantara is um, minimizes reflections, especially, you know, in the dash area. Also, too, um, it just adds a more upscale, plush kind of look to it. But it's also very, um, you know, snug. It kind of helps uh, hold you into place in those areas. So that's the GSF. So we're going to take a look at the car that was the star last year, but still will be for those that are looking for more of a performance two-door vehicle, so the RCF.